Hey, my name is Forrest Stevens. I'm here with Al Smith today, and he is the creator of Jeep Kitchen. It's an awesome setup for an overland vehicles, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about it. Hey, my name is Al Smith, so I, uh, I did a lot of traveling in my life. I'm a big, big on adventure. I think experiences are far more important than things, although you wouldn't know it looking at my Jeep. I think that if you buy things, they should really be about giving you and providing you with experiences. And so you know, on that vein, I started sailing the coast when I was really young and I've been sailing up and down uh, the coast of North and South America for most of my life. Um, and at some point I said, hey, you know what, I'd really like to go inland because I've done everything on the ocean. And so I sold the boat and I, I decided to build up some kind of rig and I looked at RVs and they weren't they weren't cool and you couldn't go remote places with them they just fall yeah. apart so i started digging into it. i've always been a jeep guy and so i thought hey well what if i can take my jeep and camp with it so i started camping with my jeep and i started realizing that there's this whole genre out there called overlanding where guys are building up vehicles to live out of their vehicle and off of their vehicle and it really it really opened my eyes most of it was not in north america it was like uh, africa australia places like that and it really opened my eyes to the fact that you can build a rig that's really comfortable for outdoor living. So even if it's pouring rain, windy, whatever, you still have the things and the space and the stuff you need to be comfortable while you're traveling on the road and you can make it fairly easy for yourself. One of the things that you'll find uh, all over the world, there's these things called rooftop tents and they've been using them in Africa and all these other continents for years, 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 years. Uh, North America never really picked it up. It was more of an RVing, tenting, backpacking kind of place. And so when I started looking into it and I saw them for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, I need that. So I imported one, uh, stuck it on my Jeep, and I was the only guy I saw for like two years with a rooftop <laughs> tent. And so every time we'd roll into a space and I'd set the tent up, literally like five people from a campground, if we were at a public campground, I tried to avoid those as much as possible, but if we're there, I'd have five people standing around asking me questions about my <laughs> rooftop tent and my Jeep, and can I look in it, and can I, and it was just, it was hilarious to see that North America hadn't really seen rooftop tents. Right. Uh, fast forward seven or six or seven years now, they're starting to become very popular. The last mm -hmm. couple of years, there's been a huge growth in overlanding, and so there's lots more rooftop tents kicking around, but the whole concept behind it is, you keep all your bedding in it, you just arrive at camp, you fold it open, it's cantilevered so it folds open kind of like a big pop-up book mm -hmm. uh, and then you just climb in and go to bed. There's a few core things you need when you travel, right? Obviously you need your place to sleep that's out of the weather that you can get changed in and that sort of stuff. Um, and then once you pass that, you need a little bit of living area because you don't want to eat in your tent, you don't want to mm -hmm. do that sort of stuff. So the awning provides a really simple, fast way of setting up an eight foot by eight foot covered area that if it's raining you can sit under here you can have your table here with dinner under the awning and stuff it gives great light for shade for shooting videos yeah you know stuff like that so it, it's just it's really quick you fold it out it's usually it's easier with two people but i've got used to it i can do it just by myself pretty quickly and then i stake the ends down in case it's uh in case it's windy out and often if it's raining i'll tip one corner down so the water all rolls off and doesn't pool and you know, I've learned some of those things the hard way. Yeah. And then inside this, there's actually a clip-in awning that goes inside, or clip-in tent that goes inside here that's like eight feet tall by eight by eight. It's like a square, big, gigantic, eight foot by eight foot square. Yeah. Uh, and that's where the kids sleep when we travel. So, and you can use it for like a living room or a change room or whatever you want when you're traveling. You mm -hmm. can buy uh, mosquito netting that goes clips in here. So you have a sealed mosquito netting thing in here as well. Okay, so once you're all set up, of course, you got sleeping quarters, you got a place to live, you got outdoor living, now you need a kitchen. And watch how fast this sets up. This is my favorite part. Okay, now you're ready to cook. <laughs> it's just that fast. That's it. So the whole idea is you've got a stainless prep surface, which not a lot of, it's nice to have a place to work. I actually also use it as an editing station. Like if, <laughs> if I'm on a trip, my laptop will be here. It's like a standing desk for me, which oh, is awesome. Yeah. Your prep surface, you got two big huge storage doors and everything locks in and th this drawer locks in and out, but you got two gigantic storage drawers just to make it really easy to play with. And in this one I keep all my uh, cutlery and the stuff you use on a regular basis, my cups and then more food. The top one's all food. And then this is all like pots and pans and plates and oils and soaps and my coffee maker and stuff like that. And then you've got a fridge over here. This is your fridge freezer. So it's 50 liters, so you can put a wine bottle standing up in it. It's about that tall, just to give reference. But it's just a gigantic hole that keeps everything cold. And right now it's running at minus two. So it's minus two degrees in there. And this is all just off the starter battery. Yeah, so the whole thing runs off a 12 volt in the Jeep. And I'll be able to sit for like three days before the fridge starts to flatten the battery. Yeah. 
Um, they're really efficient. Uh, and though I travel with the portable solar panel I lay out to keep everything charged. Charge. So if you want to sit somewhere for a week and not start your Jeep, you can. And I charge a lot of batteries when I travel. Nice. So I typically drain my battery pretty fast if I'm not careful. So the only thing that seems to be missing is maybe like a, a sink or, or some, like how do you do dishes? Yeah, so I used to, when I originally designed it, this was going to be the sink. Okay. But the idea of having a sink that was attached was horrible. It was way better to have something you can take to a river or take out or pour out or anything yeah. like that. So I just use my bowls okay. as, as the, uh, to wash everything in. Yeah. Uh, this one has, this is this is meant to be, I'm gonna make a little sink that clips in here. Nice. That's what this relief is for. I, have, I just haven't got around to making okay. it yet. So it'll be a fun add on for people that want a sink. And then obviously you need to travel with water and everything because you want water. So on the tailgate, I've got all my water cans right here. So I've got two water cans I carry. Sometimes if I'm on a trip and I know I'm not going to be running out of fuel, I'll carry four water cans, take more water. Oh yeah. So right now it's split half fuel, half water. This is of course the shovel to dig your latrine if you need to, if you need to go visit the lavatory <laughs> and you're in the middle of nowhere, you got to make your own, right? Yeah. And then I carry like stove fuel and stuff inside the spare tire. And there's a thing that goes on here and clips on where I have my high lift jack and my axe and other oh, yeah. stuff. So all your traveling recovery gear and stuff like that sits up above it. So what was the, how did you come up with the concept for this? Yeah, so for me, uh, it really started on that trip to the Arctic, which is why I guess I talk about it a lot because it's what really kicked this whole thing off. Yeah. Um, I, we were traveling and we found that every day we'd arrive at somewhere uh, and we'd have to, you know, every day you'd be getting up pulling your kitchen out, setting it up, cooking, cleaning it, putting it back. Mm -hmm. And then you drive for the day. You wouldn't stop for lunch because nobody wants to pull it out and set it all up again over lunch. So you'd eat crappy stuff for lunch. And then at the dinner time, you'd arrive in your campsite after traveling for the day and you'd set up and then you'd have to tear down, clean up and put away because of all the bears and everything. So right. you're setting up and tearing down your kitchen twice a day. Yeah. We actually timed it and added it up and just setting up and tearing down and cleaning the kitchen was like an hour and 45 minutes a day. <laughs> Which is time you could be either on the road, sitting, enjoying, editing, doing whatever you yeah. want to do, right? The whole idea for me was was creating something where I could just pull it out. And you saw how fast it comes out. I can just pull it out and cook. Yeah. To the point now where I'm, from the moment I arrive, I've timed this. From the moment I arrive, I've got the tent set up, the awning out, the kitchen running, and dinner made, and sitting down and eating dinner within 20 minutes. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, so I, and that's 20, so I'm, I'm my actual kitchen setup time is like almost nothing. Yeah compared to the hour and 45 minutes I was doing before. And then if I travel with the kids, they get hungry in the middle of the day. So we can just pull over to park and yeah. cook food for them. We don't even have to unpack because the kitchen, you can put everything else on top of the kitchen. And because it's a stainless top, mm -hmm. you don't have to unpack everything to get out all your food and all your cookware. Because at the end of the day, once you've got your food, your cookware, your fridge and all that kind of stuff, the only thing left is clothes and supplies. And for you guys like you and me, camera gear, right? Yeah. Like that's that's all that's left. Well, it really eliminates the, the need of an extra surface like a like a picnic table yeah. like when i traveled in my van i would always have to take a bin out yeah. find a picnic table set it up yeah but this you have your prep station you yeah got your, your kitchen and i actually stuff. have a little table so on the right of the kitchen there is a uh, four chairs yeah and a table yeah. that's like big you know so i i often we set that up and we have our chairs that's where we eat yeah so we bring our own table with us as well nice nice what would your advice be to somebody who wants to get into overlanding Oh, that's interesting. My my advice, honestly, would be buy whatever you can and get on the road. Like, don't spend too much on your vehicle. Like, I'm lucky I, I have an income that's enough that I can build a ridiculously expensive vehicle. Uh, but you can buy, like, a, like we were talking, a Toyota 80 series Land Cruiser, like an early 90s one for like five or six grand, put a rooftop tent on it and then put a kitchen in the back and be on the road and getting to some amazing epic locations. So I just say get on the road. My, my advice is go. Like, don't think you need to over prepare. Just go. It doesn't matter. Like, you'll prepare along the way. Like, you'll be forced to prepare along the way, right? And you can research everything and you can experience everything and you can spend a ton of money, but that's less money you can spend on your adventure. Right. And so my, my advice to anyone who wants to start overlanding is just get in a vehicle and go. And then you might want to change your vehicle after a few trips. Then you might want, like, don't think you need the ultimate vehicle. Don't think you need the biggest vehicle. You know, don't think you need all the best gear. Mm -hmm. Just get out there and go. You'll find very quickly what you need and don't need, right? And that's part of it. And, and always pack like you're backpacking. Because all that other stuff is just extra waste. You don't need it. It's too much stuff. If anybody wants to find the Jeep Kitchen yep. or about you or anything like that, where can they go? Uh, you can go all over the place. You can go to alsmith.com. It's my website, which I can't believe I got that domain. Uh, you can go to youtube.com forward slash alsmith. That's my YouTube channel. 
Uh, I've got, uh, you can hook up with me on Facebook. I'm not unfriendly. You can go to Overland Kitchen or JeepKitchen.com and you can learn about me there and learn about what I'm doing. And, and you'll see, like, on my YouTube channel and my stuff, you'll see my trips when I'm doing them. You'll see that sort of stuff. And you'll get to see some overlanding stuff. Like, when I go to uh, overlanding places, I often do a little video or I do photos and talk about it on my Facebook page and all that kind of stuff. So, awesome. I'm pretty online. I have Snapchat and all that stuff, but I don't use it as much. I'm on Instagram too. That's Al Smith Photo. That's a wrap, I'd say. Was it a, was it a good wrap, like an M&M wrap, or was it like a...